there, BAC family. Steve McDonald here, just having my fourth cup of coffee in the morning. I'm almost awake now. And I thought I'd just kind of check in and see if everyone's in good health and how you're dealing and doing with this um, social distancing that we got going on here. Um, I also want to say thank you to many of you. Um, as I'm speaking to a lot of you on the phone, I keep hearing the same message over and over. So many of you are reaching out and calling other people in the church, just making sure they're okay, uh, talking to them for five or 10 minutes, uh, seeing if they need anything. And you know, it's so encouraging to hear this, that um, our church family is loving on each other and taking care of each other. And again, I just wanna say thank you so much. You truly are demonstrating the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus. Um, it's been a while. It's been a couple weeks now since uh, we couldn't go to the church and, and um, I'm working out of home. Um, a lot of things have changed in, in, in those times. Uh, a few things good, a few things not so good. I mean, I have the opportunity now to read books that have been sitting beside me for a few months just begging for attention and that is truly a blessing. I think I'm on my third book now. Um, doesn't mean I'm any smarter, but it's certainly encouraging to just be able to read those books and uh, glean some of God's wisdom from them. I'm sure you've also noticed that uh, I've so social distanced myself from my razor. Uh, I think that's a protest. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a protest. Um, I'm not going to shave until this nonsense stops and uh, we're all back at the church together. Okay. I'm not gonna do it or unless Debbie tells me that she's had enough of the scruffy look and that it's time for me to get reacquainted with Mr. Gillette. Um, either way, the chin, chin hair is here for a bit. Um, but for sure, these are strange and troubling times. And even though it's great for me to spend time at home and, and be with the family um, and to do some cooking, uh, a lot of reading and yes the odd video game I'll admit it um, it's also nice that I don't have to hold a sharp razor to my throat every day I'm getting used to that uh, I still have a lot of fear and anxiety in my heart um, every morning when I watch Debbie get dressed and go to at the front door and go to work um, I worry about her worry about who she's going to be speaking with and coming in contact with and the same holds true uh, when I think about Ian um, who also has his essential service and has to go out to work every day to work on the cars um, so that that gives a level of anxiety to my day that uh, I really have to deal with um, and I'm sure I'm not alone with that okay maybe not about you know you're not worried about Debbie going to work Although if you are, thank you very much. Um, but we all have people that I'm sure are going to work um, that have to, to be in contact with their people. And we just don't know what's going to happen. And on top of that, I mean, the only way we can get in contact with each other is by the computer screens now or on the phone. Um, so it is truly a troubling and a different time in our life. Um, there are times I sit here and I think I've caught a case of the worries from Scott. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, I don't like them. Um, but yet, as I was doing my devotional and readings today, I saw something and I thought, God is telling me to relax, and to trust him. And I thought I'd share it with you. I thought that I'd share the message with you. Um, the first scripture that I, I read was Joshua 1 9 have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go okay, well maybe the last line isn't pertinent because the only place I go is from the dining room to the living room um, to my chair but he's commanded us to be courageous not to be afraid now, look, I'm a fully devoted follower of Christ, yet I find myself responding to life pretty much like everyone else does, with fear and with worry, even though I know I shouldn't be doing it that way. Because 
as I read the Bible, God has a lot to say about fear and also about its antidote, peace. In Mark 4, we see the disciples and Jesus in a boat crossing the Sea of Galilee when a storm comes up. Uh, the disciples do whatever they can to prevent the boat from sinking uh, until they finally cry out to Jesus. And the reason they cry out to Jesus is he's asleep in the middle of the boat, in the storm. Well, Jesus wakes up. He looks around and he rebukes the storm and then suddenly all is calm. And then he looks at the disciples and says, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And as I read that, I pretty much summed up that conversation I've been having with God over the last couple of weeks. And I could feel him, feel him asking me, what are you so anxious about? Why are you afraid? My mind kept saying, are you serious? Can you not see what's going on? I mean, who wouldn't be afraid? Lord, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be a doubtful person. And then he spoke wisdom to me. And he made a few things crystal clear. He showed me that my circumstances were determining my level of peace. If life's circumstances were good, then I was at peace. But if I was in the middle of the storm, it wasn't so peaceful. I was anxious. Just like the disciples in the boat, they were fighting to stay afloat. They were exhausted from the fight. I was fearful. Because as you're battling the circumstances, you forget that God is in charge and that he does care. And then he went on to show me other things. He showed me that Jesus was trying to teach me peace is possible no matter where you are in life, no matter what storm you are facing. Can you relate to this battle? Or am I the only one? I mean, it's easy to say, isn't it? But we still struggle to understand how Jesus can expect us to remain calm in the storm. And that brings me to the last thing that God showed me. My storm and how I re react to it actually reveals my level of trust. I mean, peace doesn't mean that everything is going okay. Having peace doesn't mean that we're not in the middle of COVID-19. There are storms in our lives and they're shaking us up. I learned to trust God and to find peace even in those storms. As you listen to that little devotional and, and you read and think about Jesus having a nap in the boat as the disciples battle the storm, that maybe that'll bring some peace to you and the realization that he is in control and that he's with us wherever we go. Clearly, I have some room to grow, as I'm thinking most of us do. But I am learning that the path to peace is found in trusting God and not in our circumstances. It won't happen overnight, and I know that. Just much like this social distancing will take time, but it will happen. And I'm so thankful that we all serve a God that is patient and kind and loving and will put up with our fears and doubts and just love us and encourage us. My friends, my coffee cup's empty and I need another one. Um, I do hope that this is encouraging to you um, and I really, really look forward to getting together with you all soon. Not so much on a computer screen, but in person. Um, 
I miss you a lot. And uh, I'll be talking to most of you soon rather than later. Before I go, just let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for being with each and every one of us. And Lord, I just pray your peace upon the entire BAC family. Father, if anyone is ill, I ask for your healing on them now. Lord, if anyone is hurting, give them, let them experience your love, Father. Fill each and every one of us with your spirit, Lord. Move us, Father, closer to being like you. Help us to reach out and connect with other family members who may be hurting. Let us be an encouragement to all. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Thank you.